Well, 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 what do we have here? Yes, that's right. This is the teardrop camper build that I did uh, about two, three years ago. I don't even remember. I have kids now and the only things that matter in life now are that I'm alive and that my children and wife are alive. But here we are. Ever since I built this thing and I've been building my new cabin on my off-grid property, people keep asking me, where is it? Why aren't you using it? Why don't you camp in it? Where the heck did it go? And so I figured I would create a video to show you where the teardrop camper is, why I'm not using it, and all the things I regret about it. For starters, for those who don't know the details that went into this teardrop camper build, let's go over them quickly. The camper is built on a four x eight Harbor Freight trailer. They run about 550 bucks and they're rated up to 1,720 pounds. They come with 12 inch wheels. They come with the axle, the leaf springs and everything. They are meant to fold, but I knew I was never gonna fold it. So I bolted the frame together. Now, the first thing I did was put bigger wheels and tires on it. They're 13 inch. I tried 15 inch, but they just simply wouldn't fit on the frame without spacers. Even though I only went up one size, they look way bigger and provide just a better look and appearance and give the whole trailer a lift. The shell of the trailer is made up of wood, fiberglass, epoxy primer, and bed liner. All right, let's get into the list of things that I regret doing and the things that I've noticed might not have been the best way of doing it. So a couple of things to note. I am not a camper, okay? I'm an ideas guy and I like working with my hands, bit of a woodworker, and that's why I have this. I always wanted to build a trailer. I thought it would be a fun experiment, a fun project, and therefore this is what I built. But I'm not a camper, so I don't know all the things, the ins and outs, the things that I could possibly use, the things that I could do without. I kind of was guesstimating on a lot of this. So that leads me to my first gripe about this build. I went ahead and framed up the walls as if I was building a small cabin or something. I made one by twos and one by ones to create the exoskeleton. The side walls are one by one framed walls on eight inch centers with quarter inch plywood on either side, exterior and interior. Everything else is two inch thick walls with one by two studs every eight inches or so. The whole base is insulated with two inch rigid foam the top, front and back are also two inch rigid foam and the side walls are one inch rigid foam. For whatever reason, it was a goal of mine to make sure this thing was very insulated. Even though I live in Virginia and there might be one month of the year that insulation could actually be beneficial in the winter. But other than that, it's just spring, fall and a very hot summer and insulation might honestly not be that necessary. If I was to do it again, I probably would not be so concerned about doing all that framing, fitting in as much insulation as I could, because like I said, I'm in Virginia, and doing that type of framing for the trailer caused a lot of headache, a lot of problems. And maybe not a lot of problems, just a lot of detail-oriented stuff. You know, there's just a lot of anchors, a lot of glue, a lot of spots that I could go wrong, and ultimately create cracks, grooves, and plywood joints where you could eventually get water intrusion, cracking, you name it, it could happen. Number two, I have a really unique setup here where I built basically the whole base, which is a four by eight base, and my trailer capsule, which is say five feet by eight feet. So the cap or the sleeping quarters is wider than my trailer base itself. The reason I did that, well, I wanted to get my sleeping quarters or the main you know, shell of the camper above my wheels, and I wanted to have storage. So I opted for these big rollout drawers. These things are huge. They're 42 inches long by I guess roughly two feet wide each. So we'll say 20 inches, 22 inches wide each. And they're on big heavy duty industrial sliders that are rated up to I think 250 pounds. That's great. What's not so great is the way I frame them in. They're plywood coated in epoxy primer and bed liner that still has not stopped the wood from absorbing moisture, either from water trickling down the shell of the camper into the drawers and or just moisture from being outside. And now my left drawer, as you're gonna see, is very stiff. It gets very stiff on the last quarter of you pushing it in. It still closes, but 
I just, I don't think it's all that great of a design. I think if I was gonna do a drawer design like this, it, you would have to make a very waterproof cap or something and then have the drawers come out. There's just too much room for moisture to get in and ultimately your plywood to change shape over time. The third thing on my list of things I most likely wouldn't do again if I was to build a teardrop camper would be the bed liner. And not necessarily just the bed liner, but the way I did it. Basically, the camper is made up of wood and plywood. On top of that wood, to prepare it for the epoxy and ultimately the bed liner, I'd use Total Boat Systems epoxy products. So basically, I started with their penetrating epoxy, a couple coats of that. That is a very, very water-like epoxy that soaks into the wood just like water would and then it hardens like epoxy it's very cool stuff after prepping the wood i put multiple coats of actual epoxy on the surface of the trailer i also did fiberglass around the edges and corners places that i thought it would need a little bit more robust strength uh, because well epoxy and fiberglass are a match made in heaven and can give you like incredible strength while not adding too much weight the hard part about doing epoxy and fiberglass is it does take a lot of time and I probably took some shortcuts and I really should have done the entire thing in fiberglass and just kept going. It would have cost me more, yes, it would have cost a lot more time, but I don't think I would have come across some of the issues that I'm about to point out. Also, the problem with bed liner. This drawer in this camper has been built for I think over two years now. I think we're going up to three years. Every time to this day that I open up this drawer, it reeks like bed liner in here. Bed liner is super nasty stuff. It is, it has to be very toxic. It stinks. It's the stinkiest product I've ever used. And the reason I sprayed it inside the drawers was again, to make it more robust, more waterproof, but I wouldn't put anything in here that was edible. That's for sure. Because it's just, every time I open this thing, it absolutely stinks. And while we're on the bed liner subject, this brings me to the main reason why you have not seen this trailer out and about and while I just haven't been using it. The first winter after I built this, there was a winter storm. A tree fell on my property. I had to pull this thing out of harm's way essentially because trees were falling left, right, and center. So I wanted to get this thing parked in a safe area. Ultimately, Murphy's Law. I am towing this thing with my Jeep and one of the fallen trees clips this huge, well, this section of the teardrop. That small hit created a small crack, which led to constant leaking during the freeze, thaw, melt, spring, winter cycle that we had that year. And it severely damaged the exterior and ultimately there was a small leak on the interior. So I basically had to park it inside my shop and it has not come outside since. The bed liner simply cracked when I went under that tree and there was not nearly enough strength or waterproofing material under that bed liner. So I've got damage down here. You can see it cracking and moisture and stuff has gotten in here, but up on the side and top here is where the major damage occurred. And so basically I am going to have to fix this, redo it. And ultimately I just want to sell it. I want to get rid of it. So if any of you are watching and are excited or interested in, a, in, in maybe getting this, please send me an email. Maybe I don't have to do as much and you want to take this on for yourself. I think if my shell was waterproof, perfectly epoxied and fiberglassed prior to the bed liner, yeah, I think the bed liner would be a great addition. It looks cool. It does create a nice rugged and tough surface. So what I'm most likely going to have to do is strip this thing down and redo the epoxy and fiberglass. Most likely do the entire shell again in multiple coats of fiberglass and epoxy. And then if I do wanna go down the bed liner route again, I could, but not until I know that my shell is perfectly waterproof and ready to go. Because I was making things up on the spot, I realized after I built it and put everything together that this is way too high for me to get in. So I came up with the idea and got this telescoping boat ladder, which is stainless steel, it won't rust, it folds up and that has proved to be a really nice way to get in and out. Oh, get, get in and out of this uh, teardrop. 
I opted for a single door and that's primarily because these things are very expensive. They run between four to 500 bucks, upwards of $600 just for a single door. And I was trying to keep this thing on a budget. There's no way I was gonna spend $1,000 in doors alone. Again, because I don't camp all that much, having a single door has not made the slightest difference to me, but most teardrops and campers like this that you see typically have a door on either side. Let me know in the comments if it matters that much to you, but the extra 500 bucks, I just couldn't. I kept the interior super simple. I have a little shelf in the back to put storage, battery pack, whatever you want. But the primary goal for the camper was to have a really nice, comfortable spot to sleep. So it almost fits an entire queen bed inside it and has two reading lights. The two reading lights have USB out, so that way you can multi-use those lights to also charge your electronics. And on a camping trip, a USB port is pretty nice to have. Another notable feature about this camper is the 180 watt solar panel on the back. The solar panel itself kind of developed the design for the back of the trailer. Gives you that nice angle so you can always point it towards south and get 180 watts worth of solar throughout the day. The cables come inside the trailer where you can charge your battery pack, solar generator, whatever you want, and ultimately it can kind of grow with you. Like all good campers, I have a Max Air fan. It's the exhaust version, has four speeds. It's really easy on power. It's been running for days on the battery that I have in here right now. And all you gotta do is open up a window and it creates a beautiful draft and it cools it off pretty quick. The main costs on this were the door, which was basically 500 bucks, the trailer frame, which is basically 500 bucks, the ladder, I think, which is about $50, the Max Air fan, about $150. Each window, I think, ran me close to $200. The solar panel, close to 200 bucks. Bed liner and epoxy products, yes, they're expensive. Total Boat is a big supporter of my channel, so they were able to hook me up. But bed liner is, is pretty expensive. I think ultimately you're looking at right around $300 of the bed liner that I used on this camper. The bigger wheels cost me right around $200. I used a lot of scrap wood to build this thing. The rigid foam, rigid foam now is quite expensive, so you'd have to very, you'd, you'd really have to consider what you want to insulate your camper with and if you want to insulate it. All in all, this was a lot of fun for me to build. Like I said, I'm not a camper. The whole mission for me was to build something cool, fun, usable. I think it's some of those things. I think there's some, some room for improvement. And now I obviously have to fix the whole exterior up uh, to prepare it for its next home and adventure. So I, anyhow, hope that answered some of your questions. Honestly, I, I think I basically covered the majority of what I might do differently and what you guys should strongly consider before building your own. There, I think there's some great ideas that were involved in the build of this project, but also some not so great ideas. So everything with a grain of salt and with me, you might, you might be extra salty. So please keep that in mind. Well, old girl, I'm gonna have to give you a makeover this month. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like the video, it helps me out. And uh, if you're not subscribed and you like what you see, feel free to hit that button and uh, we'll see you next time, most likely on the cabin build. All right, see ya.